Joining us now, Peter Schweitzer. He's author of the book, Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich Helping China Win. It's great to have you on, Peter. There's so much to talk about. First, this, what documentation did you use for the book? Because Democrats in D.C. are saying this is another smear campaign. Yeah, it's not a smear campaign. It's based on facts. There's 100 pages of footnotes uh, in the book. Uh, we only use open source information. That means Chinese corporate records. That includes court documents, uh, materials developed by the United States Senate. Um, so you can look, look at the footnotes and you can find exactly the sourcing that we're using. And Treasury documents about cash flows, right? From yeah, Finland? that's right. Uh, it, it's all open source information. We don't use anonymous sources. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, is that it's all very straightforward. What we did use also was uh, the Hunter Biden laptop, and we used information uh, that was the uh, emails uh, from one of Hunter Biden's business partners. Uh, and what it demonstrates it. is that this was not just a story of corruption and cronyism. It involves a very troubling intelligence component in a lot of these dealings. Yeah, let's stay on that. What concerns you most about the conflicts of interest you found in the Biden family? You say they're doing lucrative deals uh, worth tens of millions of dollars with Chinese companies tied to the equivalent of China's KGB. And by the way, the White House has never denied or Hunter's never denied. Both of them have never denied the content of what's in the laptop. So talk to us about That's that. What worries you most? Yeah, that's exactly right. What worries me most is uh, we first broke the story on these commercial deals with the Biden family in China back in 2018. What we've done is taken the new material and tried to figure out who made those deals happen in China. And in every one of the cases, those are businessmen that have ties to the highest levels of Chinese intelligence. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, the private equity deal where Hunter Biden was put on the board of this private equity company financed by the Chinese government. That deal uh, was done by a Chinese businessman named Che Fang. When he was doing that deal with Hunter Biden, he was business partners with the vice minister for the Ministry of State Security in China, a guy named Ma Jian. Ma Jian's responsibility was the recruitment of foreign nationals uh, to spy on behalf of China. Uh, another one of the businessmen that was involved in that deal who also transferred $5 million to another one of Hunter Biden's businesses uh, is, is a guy named Mr. Zhao. His business partner at the time was the family of the former Minister of State Security who ran the entire spy apparatus of China. So the question is, why did these businessmen hand this money over to the Biden family? And I don't think it's philanthropy. I don't think it's business. There's no discernible uh, business services that Hunter Biden performed for this money. I think we have to start looking at the notion, investigating the fact that the Bidens may be compromised in what was a Chinese backed intelligence operation. Yeah, in the early 2000s, uh, former vice president and uh, you know, Biden was and Senator Biden, was deeply in debt. He had a negative net worth of like negative 52,000. Uh, by the way, what is the fallout of Nancy Pelosi's family ties to China? Yeah, Nancy Pelosi is another example. There are also Republicans as well. But in Nancy Pelosi's case, she used to be actually pretty critical of Beijing. Uh, then something happened in the late 2000s. Her husband hooked up in a series of deals on mainland China. And her son also went to Beijing looking for deals. And her position evolved. Um, all you have to do is look at the 2000 Olympics in Beijing. Uh, remember, those were held. Nancy Pelosi initially favored a boycott of those Olympics. But then it turns out that two limousine companies that her husband was part owner of got lucrative deals ferrying VIPs around Beijing for the Olympics. And she literally changed her position to no longer supporting a boycott. Um, so you've seen an evolution with Nancy Pelosi. And it's important to point out that really since COVID happened in January of 2020, she has refused to allow a single hearing in Congress and in, in the House of Representatives on the origins of the COVID virus. Wow. And now China's making inroads with deals in Central America and weighing in on the Ukraine-Russia crisis and lecturing U.S. about that. Peter Schweitzer, we'll have you back on. We want to do a longer interview with you and go more, uh, more deeply in this because we're going to stay on this story going forward. It's good to have you on, Peter. Good luck with your book. Come back soon.